This is Still in the Clear, the podcast that distills the art and science of home distilling into easy to follow, audible nuggets for the beginning moonshiner. This information is for education and entertainment purposes only. You could even call it fiction if you want to. Home distilling may be illegal in your area. I'm your host, Cyrus, and I'm just a guy that lives in the woods and likes to make shine. So let's get into it. So I wanted to take a minute to say thanks to everyone who has been supporting the show. Whether you've uh, purchased some of the merchandise, like the totally awesome vintage Still in the Clear cap, or whether you've been getting your distilling supplies using uh, stillintheclear.com's Amazon links, which uh, they Amazon pays us a little fraction as a commission, and it doesn't cost you any more to do that, or whether you've been sharing our podcast with your friends and family and people you know that might find it interesting, or or you know sharing it on your your Facebook groups pages or anywhere social media we are really starting to grow now and i appreciate all the support from you folks so a sincere thanks and let's get to the show all right folks in today's episode i want to talk about invert sugar um and this has come about because i had had some sugar given to me uh, last year, it had sat for a while and soaked up uh, enough moisture to become hard sugar rocks. So I decided to use it to make inverted sugar because I had never done this before and wanted to try it out. And it worked out really well. So I thought I would share it with y'all and just kind of walk you through the process, maybe describe what invert sugar is to those that are unaware. So, what is invert sugar? It's used heavily in culinary arts for desserts, mostly, and uh, to a great degree, it's used in home beer brewing. Uh, and as home distillers, we can also use it in the fermentation stage. So, in simplest terms, invert sugar is just table sugar that's had the molecular bonds between the glucose and fructose broken. Um, And as a result, it's just a thick, clear liquid. The difference between sugar and invert sugar is the monosaccharide bonding. Granulated sugar is a disaccharide that is composed of two monosaccharides bonded together, glucose and fructose. And because the monosaccharides in granulated sugar are still bound together in it. That's that's why it's in a solid state. However, the gu- the glucose and the fructose in inverted sugar are split in their cooking process with citric acid and water, resulting in a liquid state. So what you have in both cases is still sucrose, but it's uh, one is solid state and one is in liquid state. And the monosaccharides are separated. And what this does is it makes the job that the yeast has uh, easier because the yeast doesn't have to first break that bond between the glucose and the fructose. It, it's already broken, so the, the yeast can just skip that step. And there is yeast out there that is specifically designed to break that bond. Uh, But this just makes everything easier. And anything we can do to make life easier for the yeast uh, is better for us as distillers. And, you know, this will reduce the time that's required for the completion of the fermentation process. And helps to prevent the stalling also, because sometimes the stalling in fermentation can happen because the yeast is kind of wore out because uh, the ingredients that we've used have just made it tougher for the yeast. And invert sugar is simple to make, uh, requires only a handful of very affordable ingredients and some super basic skills. 
So you'll need twice as much sugar as water by volume, not by weight. And you'll need two teaspoons of lemon juice for every gallon of water that you use. So I'm speaking in kind of general terms because I don't know how big of a batch you want to make. So you can do this with half a gallon of sugar. You can do it with a cup of sugar. Uh, and you can just break these measurements into whatever sizes you need to do whatever batch size that you want to do. And since we're going by volume and not weight, one useful piece of information is that seven, roughly seven pounds of sugar is equal to a gallon of sugar. So, and it's really like 7.12 pounds of granulated sugar is equal to a gallon of sugar. Because, you know, when you go buy sugar, you, you don't ever buy it by volume, you buy it by weight. So you've got to convert that weight into volume. So the, the invert sugar recipe goes like this. You take, um, it, it's really simple because you just mix all the ingredients together at once. There's not stages where you add this or you add that. Uh, you put the sugar, the water, and the lemon juice in a pot big enough to hold all of it, obviously. You heat that mixture over medium heat until it comes to a gentle boil. And then you hold that and simmer for 20 minutes and that's it that's all you got to do and while it's simmering you kind of want to uh, sometimes the sugar will crystallize a bit at the edges of your pot where you've been stirring and it's you know you've uh, you've splashed the water and sugar up on the side of the pot sometimes it'll crystallize there and you can just take like a pastry brush or a spatula or something and just scrape that down just continue to kind of knock that back down into the mixture and so after that you're done and at this point if you're not going to steep in grains then you're ready to finish adding whatever volume of water is required for your recipe and pitch your yeast you know assuming that you've got your temperature down for the yeast and everything or you can steep some grains and add that to the mixture before you pitch your yeast just depends on your recipe so the uh, the invert sugar does not affect whatever your recipe is that you're using the amount of sugar uh, the amount of water or anything like that. You can substitute directly invert sugar for regular sugar. So when when I made my batch, uh, once I was done with the inverted sugar, I added my back set into my firm uh, my fermenter, and I added my invert sugar into the fermenter, and then I steeped some corn and. Uh, added that into the fermenter and then I added more water to get it to the level that I wanted and pitched my yeast and I also uh, thanks to a recommendation from Wayne in our group over there at mewe.com I also used tomato paste as a yeast nutrient and all of that worked excellent so I had a real good batch I ended up with 12% um, ABV on that one so, yeah, not bad at all. Turned out really good. Flavor was really good, the end product. So, if you want to try Invert Sugar, I, I highly recommend it. It's worth it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it's just one more piece of knowledge that you can have and wasn't hard to do at all. And I want to mention also here, um, if, you're a, if you're a new listener and you haven't heard me talk about our community over on mewe.com called moonshine for beginners you got to go check it out what a great group and the folks over there are polite nice helpful and funny uh, it's a fun little group and much better place to gain information and knowledge than most of the places you find on the internet so check that out there's a link in the show notes always uh, for that group come join us if you're not familiar with me we check it out uh, mewe.com you'll like it alternative to facebook and much better so that's all i've got for this week and i'll talk to you all later well that wraps up this week's episode i hope you enjoyed it 
share this episode with people you think might enjoy it. That would be much appreciated. It'll sure help our show grow. And don't forget, doing is improving. Have a good one. Talk to y'all next week.